welcome back everyone it was a quiet friday going on until luis enrique decided to drop the names of the spanish national team squad that's going to qatar lots he of decided to choose violence <laughs> yeah he, he really did <laughs> lots of controversy the usual names coming up why is the nacho there why are real madrid players there why is ramos there we're going to dive into this then dive into la liga but let's start with the, the squad selection let's start from like the goalkeeping position and i think that's the area where there's not so much controversy if yeah. you don't if you're not a fan of the English Premier League, that is. Yeah, at this point, even if you're a fan of the English Premier League, you should understand that David De Gea is not good with his feet. For a Spanish goalkeeper, that's absolutely insane, by the way. So I don't think I feel like with a lot of these selections, if you're still complaining. You're just complaining because you have nothing better to do. So I believe Simon, Raya, and Sanchez are the expected and right picks given what Lucho wants. What about Kepa? He's at a research rest this season. Yeah, Kepa is another one. And Kepa was on the list or was on the pre-list. So I thought, okay, Kepa might have a chance. But, you know, sadly, he didn't get it. He may feel he deserves it, but it's what it is. Yeah. David Raya has been very good this season. I followed Brent for the bit. They've had a pretty decent year so far. So, yeah, I guess he literally decided to stick with what he knows. Yeah, yeah, he decides to stick with that. And the defense is where, like, we start getting into the controversy because Eric Garcia. Uh, okay. It's a boring debate. It's a familiar debate, mm-hmm. but... Um, Luis Enrique keeps on picking him. Yeah, he's, su- he's oh, yeah, what? he surprisingly started picking him when even when he wasn't playing much at Manchester City, he's come to Barcelona, he still picks him. So at first I was like, okay, this is a weird one, but at this point I'm like, I would have been so shocked if he didn't pick him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But for me, the big surprise was picking Hugo again. Yeah, that I was, didn't think he'd in, do that. Especially in a position that's not his. Like he hasn't, exactly. he hasn't really played center back for Valencia. Mm-hmm. He hasn't mm-hmm. played there in, in a year and a half for Valencia. So that was also a big shock for me. Yeah. And when you consider the fact that I guess maybe he's moving on from Ramos, but Ramos is there. He can play that role. Inigo Martinez, he's been very good this season. So as you arrive for Athletic Club. So yeah. I do question those two picks over over like the other players so that's my grab with it also my grab is also in the left back position where Jordi Alba is picked but for most of the season for Barcelona has been their third choice left back and I remember when we were on the chat with Adura and we're discussing Alex Moreno how good he's been for Mm -hmm. Texas and I felt maybe that would have been a better pick than Jordi Alba yeah but we also have to consider, while Alba has been third choice for most of the season, he's actually played a lot in the last month because the other left backs have been playing right back and centre back. So yeah. um, the injuries we've had have done Alba a favour. And I feel like, and we, I wouldn't have said this before 2020 because he and Lucho had a falling out towards the end of Lucho's stay at Barcelona, for those who don't know. So... The fact that he has kept faith with Alba is pretty surprising, but still, I'd rather Alba than Alonso in the squad, even though Alonso has deputized well at centre back. For Alex Moreno, I feel like if if we had games, more games, and he has picked him before, he would have picked him now. I feel like he, Lucho is in a position where he's like, okay, I don't want to just experiment and because it will take time for Alex Moreno to get used to like the others and the others to get used to him. So I feel like in Lucho's usual stubbornness, he's like, okay, forget from them, just stick with what we know for now. Yeah. And and that seems to have worked for him in the Euro in the Euro Cup in Nations mm-hmm. League. So there might be no reason for him to change at the at this moment. In the midfield, though, it's like I feel. Both of us feel like that midfield, he didn't... Yeah, the midfield could have been much different. Because yeah. for the Let's Go Madrid players, uh, Koke and Llorente, mm-hmm. I don't think they've done enough this year 
mm-hmm. to justify being in that team. Yeah, because I agree. Canales has been better than them. Mirima mm-hmm. has been better than them. You can argue Bryce. they play Bryce and Sunset. Sunset, yeah. But even with Sunset, I'll say maybe it's like three months he's been good, but mm-hmm. you can question whether he's ready to that next level. But like someone like Bryce, who's moved into Real Sociedad, he's taking that next level into his career. And yeah. you just question whether Luis Enrique might get in trouble by picking just what he knows because I don't think Urente has been that good. I, I really like him, but he hasn't been that good. So same as yeah. Conte. Yeah, I'd have picked Lorenti. I don't know if you saw my discussion with um, Taps, but I'd have picked him as a right back, not as a midfielder, because he hasn't been good in that role. Koke, on top of everything, is just coming back from an injury. Yeah. Uh, Soler, what Soler's saving grace is that Galtier changed formation recently and has been playing more midfielder. So Soler has been getting more game time in the past. Um, cup in the past month is like Jordi Alba, like a beneficiary of circumstances. So, given like I like we've discussed, I'd have put Marino in for Koke and Bryce in for Yorente, or Bryce in for Aspiliqueta and moved Yorente back. But we can't have what we want, can we? No, we can't. We can't. Mm-hmm. Which brings us to the four line because the one. Like we're both fans of the Aguascos, right? And we both mm-hmm. feel like he deserves some sort of recognition. Mm-hmm. But I kind of like the Spain attacking a lineup or the attacking shape that Luis Enrique has picked because I feel a lot of the criticism we had about Spain in the last couple of international tournaments is that they don't really have that much pace up top. They don't really have that much quality up top. But like this is a team that has a lot of pace, a lot of quality. I'm not sure whether there's uh clinical nine, let's say like Fernando Torres or Davi in the past, but it is a team where they'll be able to break with speed. They'll be able to, there'll be lots of trickery as well on this team. Exactly. I really love the inclusion of both here in Pino and Nico Williams because both of them provide a lot of skill and trickery on the wide, in the wide areas. People like Asensio and Sarabia are more how I say, associative players than skillful one-on-one players. So with the forward line, we see a lot of versatility and a lot of ways Lucho can just do things. Yeah. So it's not like before where we knew that the wingers were only going to play one way and that was cutting inside. Now we have players that are comfortable playing where they have players that are comfortable making outside to inside runs. They have players that are comfortable just coming inside and leaving the wide area for a fullback. So that forward line is pretty young and has lots of potential. Yeah, and, and it's very versatile, as you said, because not only can Morata, and we're having this discussion off, off air, but not only Morata can play as center forward, but you can have Ferran Torres deputized there as center forward. Dani Omo play almost as an attacking midfielder. Sometimes Asensio has played in that center attacking midfield, and maybe Lucho can deploy him as that, like, false line as well so mm-hmm. there's so many variations so many like um so many options for him even there's Asifati who we haven't discussed who can also play as a center forward so mm-hmm. um I'm quite excited for that forward line I think it's going to produce a lot more goals than it did in the Euros and but it's just with the midfield I'm worried about a bit because a lot of those players aren't in form at the moment so mm-hmm. we'll, we'll see in midfield if he as much as I don't want him to do this, he can just play the Barcelona trio, but then I, I don't think you should overplay them. I feel like there's some games where you shouldn't play Pedri and Gavi together. You need to play Pedri with someone else. Yeah. And you can also play like a double pivot with Busquets. And yeah, Busquets and Rodri. Yes, that yeah. has been... Pre- he used that against France and that worked for most of the game. I, I don't, they didn't lose because of that pivot, but... That's an option too, if he wants to do that. And then Soler is another. The reason I feel why he picks Soler and Llorente is because of that ability to arrive in the box. Yeah. So uh, Gavi also does it, but he doesn't do it as much as those two. So I feel like that's something useful to have. Yeah. Yeah, it's very useful. And when you look at the games that Spain have, they've been put in a group with Germany, which is going to be 
the toughest in your group and how do you see that going for Spain because if they can finish top in the group they have a much easier path than finishing second yeah I mean Germany are pretty much playing like Bayern Munich because Hansi <laughs> Flick is their coach now and instead of the 3-4-2-1 it's now a 4-2-3-1 uh, but the issue with Germany I'll say is that they have big weaknesses defensively, especially the fullbacks. The fullbacks aren't what they used to be. That said, they've won a World Cup with Benedict Haldes as fullback. So, <laughs> <laughs> you know, norm, normal in quote fullbacks tend to have very good World Cups. But yeah, yeah I feel like... Kind of our in, cup, cup. Kind of... No, sorry, kind of our... No, sorry, <laughs> I mean... Well, cap I'm de Vila, sure. yeah. Cap de Vila. I'm trying sure. <laughs> to sure. sure. kind of our... <laughs> yeah. yeah, but... Um, yeah, I feel that game can go either way. Germany, Germany, they they can be got at. It's just Spain have to take their chances, and they are going to have to face two or three very good goalkeepers. Like imagine having to pick between Neuer and Ter Stegen. So yeah. it's going to be tough. But I feel. It's down. This one is down to the coaches and selecting the right forward line for that day. I feel, yeah, that's a game you can play Gavi, Pedri, and Busquets, or Gavi, Pedri, Rodri, whichever way you want to swing it, because the intensity the Germans will have, Gavi can match it by himself. So, <laughs> yeah, I feel like that's a game you can do it and then choose a very good forward line and hope they take their chances for once. Yeah. And the, the other two pe- two teams they have in their group are, are Japan and Costa Rica. Costa Rica, mm-hmm. we know them. We know Keller Navas. We, he's no string to Spanish football. Mm. Japan, there are a couple of really good Japanese players. Brian Track Frankfurt, Les Kubo in La Liga. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's going to be tasty, right? Yeah. I feel like the real banana skin is the Costa Rica one because Costa Rica are the most defensive team out of all the three all the teams in the group. Japan are a more adventurous team. Yeah, I don't think right now they're as, as adventurous as they were in 2018, but there's still a decent amount of, you know, forward-thinking play going there. Like you said, they have Kamada, they have Kubo, really talented players. But obviously against Spain, they won't have as much as possession as they had during the Asian qualifiers. So it's going to be interesting to see how everyone does yeah, it surely will be. And Kubo has been, he's, he's been, he's turned things around for himself in La Liga. Mm-hmm. It's been very exciting to watch. And it was good to see him back in, back in action against Sevilla, which was a wild game in so many ways. The two red cards. And I, I want to start off with this game because this touches on an issue that we've had in La Liga. It's almost, almost a theme of La Liga this season, the amount of red cards, the volume of red cards. Is it that La Liga is more, the fouls are more stupid than in other leagues, or is it just the referees going power hungry? I feel it's the referees because, do you, first I have a question, do you know how many red cards there have been this season? <sighs> From what Take, I've heard, 58. Uh, I, heard, I, saw, I think I saw 60 today. Oh, wow. <laughs> let's compare I don't obviously comparing leagues is stupid but in England how many red cards do you think there have been this season mm, here in that number maybe like 25 or something nine <laughs> whoa <laughs> <laughs> okay yeah like we're go- there are many games we're going to discuss in this midweek alone that we, we're going to talk about referees going hungry power and abusing the power they have. But yeah, I feel like referees, they allow players to play on that edge between yellow and red too much. And players are constantly like, okay, we know the referees are like this, so let's just keep pushing the limit, you know, borderless style. Yeah, the thing with, there are some tackles, like for example, in this game, I felt, you know what, those tackles, they're bad tackles, but I feel if you look at, if you inter- interpret the game in a different way, in a way that, you know what, it's a 50 50 challenge, is going for the ball, there's no malintent, you can give him a yellow card and give a stern warning that the next time 
your your grain out. Yeah, exactly. But I feel in this game, it was just like straight red, no intention about what this does to the show, what damage this is doing, because it's clear that the rest of stat players like not not nothing bad really happened to them. But I I just hate the fact that a game can be spawned so early by two reds. Exactly. But we have to credit Sevilla, despite the reds to Rakitic and Nianzu, they really did a good effort to keep this at a one at two one and to even score a goal with nine men against eleven. I thought that was very impressive. Yeah, and, and that's that's something that's changed since the new manager, since Sam Pauli is coming, obviously, because maybe under Loptegi, you'd have seen this team really collapse and they would have mm. gotten like stuff by six to one. But the the intensity they've shown in this game, the desire they showed in this game, what they showed in Derby is what convinces me that although they, they are in big trouble right now, they're going to survive and they might survive quite comfortably given if the attitude can change and maybe a few additions. Yeah. I mean, it's crazy, but last year we were talking about this team being second and Chelsea Real Madrid, and now we're talking about them surviving. It's just crazy. Yeah. But, yeah. And- but it's possible, yeah. I do believe that they can recover because the attitude and they never say that is still there. They just need quality to, you know, not die. <laughs> Yeah, it, it's true. It's true to say because last season, the the signs were there that it was going to be collapse right from mm-hmm. last season because they didn't pick up as many points as the first half of the season. Mm-hmm. I think their wins in La Liga for twenty twenty two is still in single digits, which for a team like that that was that was challenging, is quite appalling. Yeah. So and that's why I'm not. I don't know what's gone wrong, and I'm sure we'll talk about this when we get to Atleti. But it's just mentally they really need this break they really need this break to like go away from everything that's to club football yeah take a breather come back at it and try their best to arrest the situation yeah but we have to credit real say that they they are now the third place team in the league and you know when even though it's not vintage that we are winning at this Ramon Sanchez Pijan is never easy so you have to give them credit for that. And funny enough, for this game, they got back most of their injured players all at once. Yeah. <laughs> yeah that's funny. I looked at lamp. I'm like, oh, Silva is back. Kubo is back. Everyone's back. Yeah. It's, it's crazy that the luck that Sevilla has this season is it's incredible. Exactly. It's like you're facing real sister <laughs> when they have everyone back. Your, your neighbor's bet is face them. When they didn't have anybody except yeah. Carlos Fernandez. Yeah. If, if you see in La Liga teams with players with numbers greater than 25, you know, like, oh, they're like youth players. And then when Betis played the Real that I could count like three or four players over 20 with numbers over 25, to show you <laughs> how limited that sport was. <laughs> yeah. But it's, it's, it's quite a complicated picture there up top um, in the race for the top four, top three, top four with Real Sociedad being separated with Atleti, even Rai Vaicano, they still have somewhat of a chance to finish in the top four. But let's move on to Atletico because they are in deep crisis. It's going to take them a real effort to actually finish in top four this season, given how they're performing at the moment. They went to Mallorca, they lost Murici, the king, the pirate, he scored... And what bothered me about this athletic performance was in the first half, they gave it away. In the second half, they couldn't finish to save their life. I I don't understand this team. They play without a plan, without a desire, without structure. And look at Mallorca, and every time they went forward, it's like they could score. They could do something. They seemed like the team with more identity compared to Atleti. Yeah. I feel like that's the key word that lets you know identity. Like... They don't know what they're doing down there. And they're showing, like, in the last nine games, they've only won two. This, there are rumors now that Simeone might be sacked or something. Whether you're Simeone or not, that's a discussion for another day. But 
definitely, I feel the players need to look at themselves because Simeone, I'm sure if he was on the pitch, he'd score some of the things that they're missing <laughs> up front. Yeah. I, I'm not talking about Simeone as a player. I'm talking about right now. Yeah. <laughs> Giuliani Simeone would score some of these and he's playing for real Zaragoza for crying out loud. It's like, yeah, the, the team, Atleti switch between not having zero quality and then having some quality but not having any conversion. Like, like you said, I'm as confused as you as to what is going on with this team. But they definitely need this break. Mallorca will actually be hitting the fact that there's a break because they are, surprise, surprise, 11th in the table. Yeah, and speaking of Mallorca, they've been really good this season. And the two things that they lacked last season, they, they've gotten it this season in that they lacked a goalkeeper that was solid. And Rykovic yeah. is a really good goalkeeper. And and you is a good good upgrade of our day. <laughs> <Over Manolo Reina. laughs> and Murici, who's God, don't just, forget like, grief. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. When, when you think of last season, they were trying to get Matthew Hoppe into the team and he was going to be the star. And look at the impact Murici has had. And he said after the game that he wants to be an idol in Mallorca. He wants to be like Eto, like Webo, and boy, he's on, he's on his way there because he's already at eight goals in the league. He must be the best sign-in this year, pound for pound. Yeah, you can. You have to say it's at least top two with maybe someone like Lewandowski, but like you say, for Mallorca's needs and everything, this guy is just insane right now. Not just the goals and the quality of the goals, the way he holds the ball up. Well, I've never seen this guy have a bad first touch ever. I don't think. And I've been watching Mallorca a good amount since he came in January. He's, he's reliable. He's, um, you know, he's committed. He tracks back. And he's just a blessing to this team. He associates well with Kangin. He's associating well with Amat. Like you said, um, Javier Aguirre, his team definitely have an identity. And the, while, while Mallorca may look like typical, you know, sits back and defend team, when they attack, there's actually a quality and a process to it that you wouldn't think there would be. Yeah. And it's, I love the fact that he associates so well with Kange and with Amat. I feel that's something about his game that we don't really. Look at because you look at him and you're like, okay, this is just a big striker who's just mm-hmm. going to add the ball, which he does really well. I don't mind that, but he's also has like that quality to his game that he's an enjoyable striker to watch. And mm-hmm. if you think if Atleti have someone like him up top, maybe they'll be scoring these goals. Yeah. And the numbers are showing it. Only Lewandowski has more goals than him. And then, yeah. And insane. I don't, I think Marichi has only scored at most two penalties. So, yeah, and I feel when and he's missed two games, the one to Real Sociedad and one Sevilla. So, mm-hmm. and I think the one against Sevilla was the was one that he lost. So I can imagine if he was there, he would have made a difference yeah. as well. Yeah, yeah. Should we move on to your favorite man, Kio Manzano? <laughs> Kio Manzano, I'm just going to tell you, you failed. <laughs> <laughs> You were you're pretty heated after that game, weren't you? I was pretty heated during the game. Forget after. <laughs> I was like, what is this? How much did they pay you? <laughs> Man, okay, let's talk. Out. Let's, we okay. can have to talk out the referee, unfortunately. That's yeah. the nature of these league games. I wish we could focus on Barcelona coming back from 10 men down for the first time in the Liga history. And this is the fifth time a team has done this. The last team that did this was Sevilla against Depo in like 2003. So that's incredible. Wow. But unfortunately, we have to talk about Mr. Hilman Zanu. <laughs> yeah. You know, I, I, don't, I didn't see a problem with the Lewandowski. No, the, I don't have a problem with that one. I don't know what Lewandowski was thinking. Because, but I, I guess the goal, the first goal is where I'm like, when I saw it, I'm like, Bar is gonna have a look at it, and maybe I <laughs> that's what I thought. I was yeah. like, I, 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 the first goal into them, I thought they were looked at this and then I'm like, what? Val didn't look at it. 
And then here's the thing, right? Okay, Lando Sikram is two pretty blatant yellow cards, but when you just flash the yellow card with such veracity, you set the tone. And then throughout the second half, he was just flashing yellow after yellow after yellow for challenges that I didn't think were worth yellows, but in a bid to try and look like a good referee and be consistent, created chaos. Yeah. And I, I'll say there are two types of referees in Spanish football. There are ones that are super card hungry, and there are yeah. ones that never bring out the cards. Like for the most, for the toughest tracos, they never bring out the cards. Exactly. I, I sort of prefer the, la- the latter one because I, I prefer know, the latter. Because I know too. at least it, it might be a somewhat violent game, but at least there won't be any stupid red cards in this game. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And you're, you're also angry about what happened with Lucas Toro because. Um, Okay, he's incident. on a yellow card. Yeah. He's did try the first person booked in the second half. We get like a transition. Frankie turns and Toro brings him down. And I am thinking, okay, 10 10, and then what? Nothing. And you know how you, you know, guilty conscience is, right? Yeah. <laughs> Toro immediately gets taken off because Asate knows he should have been sent off. This is like I was like I thought Casimiro has left this. League. What is going on? <laughs> yeah, it, it was shades of Casimiro versus Rayo, where it's like Casimiro, Casimiro versus Rayo, Casimiro versus Mallorca, Casimiro versus Barcelona, Casimiro versus anybody. Yeah, <laughs> I was like, good God, Tanzano! Like you, you're not even listening to the stupid rules you're making, you're enforcing. Uh, yeah, but I guess the good news for Barcelona is like this just shows how resilient they are to because mm-hmm. to come back without Lewandowski, to come back ten men down. Like mm-hmm. frankly, after Barcelona with ten men down, I thought Osuna were going to make it a second and maybe kill the game from there. But like a lot of credit to Barcelona because that, that was showed very resilient performance. Yeah. The performance of champions is not there. Yeah, definitely you can say that. I feel like. At, at, at first, like we were getting back into it towards the end of the half, and then when we now scored, uh, Sate, though it was a bit late, he made attacking changes, and that's when I thought we'd really be in trouble because you have both Budimir and Kiki in the box. But like you said, we ended with the defense of Chadriad and Alonso at centre back, and we kept, and we didn't allow them any major chances yeah. like that in the second half. There was one where. Jimmy Avila tried to surprise Ter Stegen, but besides yeah, that, that yeah, that would have been that would have been insane. I, I wouldn't have complained because I'm like, if that's what you have to do to beat ten men, that's what you have to do. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, credit. And I'm going to say to tell a little story about Rafinha. Yeah. When Rafinha came on, I was just thinking, I'm like, what does this guy actually do? <laughs> <laughs> The commentator was like, what does this guy actually do to him? I'm like, okay, yeah, true. I'm like, he hasn't really done too well. I'm like, oh, oh, wow. <laughs> We're getting, lad. This is what he <laughs> can do. Yeah, it's not been easy for Rafinha. And I feel like maybe I expected too much of him too soon because adapting from a different league is ne- not easy. Yeah. I kind of, I think a lot of people underestimate how difficult it is to change things. So yeah. I hope that this goal, and I, in our last two away games, he has made two important contributions that have won us the game. So hopefully this does his confidence good. Yeah, and it's not just different league. It's like you're adapting from a different mentality of teams where you True. come from leads where you're used to fighting relegation and you have more space to express yourself. And then you go mm-hmm. to Barcelona where the pressure is high to win games, not, mm-hmm. just to, not just to do your skills, but to actually win games. And yeah. you're playing against players that don't give you that much space. Mm-hmm. And that, that takes a different leveling up. And for him, it was his first experience in the Champions League. He didn't do too well. And when you're playing the Champions League, it's the most high-pressured competition in world football besides the World Cup or Euros. Mm-hmm. And when you're in that competition, it takes a lot mentally to like take that next level up. So maybe that's why he struggled so far at mm-hmm. Barcelona. Yeah. But, you know, hopefully a win like this definitely brings the team together. And I know people are like, it's just a Sassuna away. I'm like, but then look at the conditions. First of all, 
the fact that it's Osasuna away is already tough enough because the crowd yeah. is always on your back. So, all in all, I feel it's a very important win and hopefully it means something by the end of the season. Yeah, and especially I'm sure the people were saying it's just Osasuna away are Real Madrid fans and their team tied with Osasuna at the Bernabeu, so... I mean, beating uh, us as soon as not for everyone. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. Remember, keeping clean all... sheets against Cat is also not for everyone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, nice transition. <laughs> they, they, they almost tied this game. At the yeah, they almost, it, they almost it, it, this Pacha, one if header was on target, that would have been a 2 2 game. <laughs> yeah, but then I guess that's why Cat is at where they are on the table. <laughs> you know, the thing is that you look at that patch of this team, and Negredo played a really good ball to get here. I'm like, I wish this was flipped. I was wishing for the life of me that it was Negredo on the end of that header because that would have been a goal if it was him. <laughs> It is, is Roman you having a problem with Thibaut Courtois? Because every game he concedes a goal. Like he's can't keep his streets tied with the poor lad. <laughs> yeah, and I don't think it's a massive, I don't think it's a problem, problem, but it's just funny. And eventually he will keep a clean sheet. But till then. <laughs> <laughs> okay, he was at fault for the goal because I feel he should have handled the initial shot from the grid with better. Yeah, but besides that, Real Madrid, for large spells in the first half, didn't really play well. No, they haven't played well in, in November, I think. Yeah, yeah, not since even the Sevilla game. I can argue they didn't deserve to really win that game the way they did. Chiron kind of flattered them because they like blitzed Sevilla really late. And then these last three games they've had, they've just um, a draw against Girona, a loss against Rayo, a tepid performance against Cardiff. But granted, they got the three points in the end, and that's what's most important. And there was a bit of a scuffle, scuffle with Vinicius, uh, Fali, Rodrigo, <laughs> which yeah. continued on social media. And this is like the weirdest stuff. Uh, Weirdest beef I've ever seen because that both teams have nothing to do with each other. Exactly. And it just goes on with the theme that I feel Real Madrid feel their players are being given a rough treatment by the other teams in La Liga to say that. Mm-hmm. And I saw the incident with Fali, and it did look like it should have been a wreck for Fali, to be honest, <laughs> because it does look like aggression. But Fali would say that it wasn't aggression. Rodrigo saying Fali does it on purpose and. Well, yeah. what's your what are your thoughts? I, yeah, I'm fan, I, I don't think the uh, the foul on Rodrigo was red card worthy because I've seen worse, but definitely he was rightly booked. The whole instant is Vinicius with Fali saying, you "No, know, Vinicius is saying we're a second division team." This that I'm like, oh, it's an it's interesting. It allows you to get the popcorn out, but it just shows <laughs> you like everyone just needs to. Focus on the football and forget about these whole side shows because I mean some people can say these side shows that Vinny keeps getting involved with are distracting him. Yeah. I mean, I personally I think he loves it. So yeah, but it also gets him off his game though, because true. It, it can really distract you if you're not in the right mood and you yeah. don't you don't have the right attitude to deal with it. Yeah. And if you- because oh, sorry. sorry, it wasn't even just Fali. It was Ale who really was really getting to Vinny in this game until he got taken off. Yeah, and I feel the thing with Vinny, right, is that he's a very talented player, but this season he's, he's been he's been dishing it out a lot. Yeah. And the problem is you're going to have to go away to a lot of these teams that you're dishing it out to at home. Yeah. And you're gonna get a really rough treatment. And yeah. the referees away from home, they're less likely to call it in your favor. True, true. And you don't want to be in that situation where you piss off Valiant from Mallorca, from Mallorca or something and he's like, I'm <laughs> so going to give you back and I'm going to get a red card and I don't care. And what's his name? Not Valiant, the other one. Um, it's not... Why am I forgetting okay. him now? Okay. No, not, 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 not,
Rayo, Rayo. Yeah, Rayo versus Vinyard. <laughs> and BBC America is starting next year. It's going to be lit. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait for that matchup. Rayo is definitely going to be like, I'll show you why. Yeah, don't worry. You wear sweat. Come, come. I'm waiting for you. <laughs> yeah. But, but yeah, that's good, though. Do you think it's this form is just like a temporary blip? Or should they be worried that it's a sign of something deeper? I think that even if it was a sign of something deeper, the fact that there's a break would just allow everyone to chill out and say, okay, let's reset. Let's get Benzema back, hopefully, after the World Cup. Let's start from there. Because in these last few games, you can definitely tell they've missed his presence because there are times when they could cross into the box, but then they're like, oh, it's just Rodrigo in there. He's not going to win too many against these big center backs, you know, so definitely they miss Benzema's presence in the box. And Rodrigo, while Rodrigo, like you said, was having a good season before, he's kind of gone off the ball and has been, his, way, his shooting has been wayward in the last couple of games, so yeah, that's something. Yeah, shooting has been like, yeah, Valverde gave a fan a gift. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I guess right. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, definitely they need to um, they definitely need this break. I think the break has come at a good time for them and then definitely we'll see how they do post World Cup. Yeah, we'll see. But right now it's like the top two in La Liga are, are far in different then in different league. They're, they're in their own league. It's yeah. I believe it's like about like Barca are 11 points ahead of Real Sociedad, Madrid are like 10 points. 11, 11. Yeah, 11 ahead of Atleti and Athletic. Yeah. And Athletic. Yeah, speaking, speaking of, of Athletic, Guruseta. Yeah, he, he could be the new Adoris, can he? Yeah, definitely. Like five goals and a goal every 39 minutes is pretty good. And he's like, he's definitely an option to like, because in Aquilans can play out wide, you can definitely do that and you know keep because this guy he really has elite movement, I feel, and the goals are speaking for themselves. He's caught up with Inaki as top scorer in just a little amount of time. Yeah, and, and that's a problem Athletic didn't have last season in that there weren't many goal scorers, but now you can see with Guruseta, I'm not sure why he's been in second division for so long. But you can see, like you said, his movements is good, and he has that striker's instinct to finish. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and you right could place, not to give you up. You can see that with his first goal against Real Madrid, where he's immediately on hand to tap in the rebound. So yeah. even his goal pretty... against Girona was like quite special. Yeah, his goal, his goal against Girona was pretty good too. I'm like, I can't see Nyaki scoring that for my life. <laughs> yeah. But but also begs the question: Why is Valverde tested three of them together? Instead, he's played Iñaki as the forward. Yeah. But it, why isn't he tested Iñaki, Nico, and Guruseta as the front three? I feel like Iñaki, Nico, and Berenguer was working so well that he decided not to touch it. But then they've got into this pattern of form and then he decided, okay, anytime Guruseta comes on, something's different about us, so let me start him. And he starts... It was really good. So after the World Cup, that's definitely something I feel we'll see a lot more of. And I feel like Nico Williams on the left wing can be more dangerous than Nico Williams on the right wing. Sure, it's really turning into that vast Neymar. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And with Athletic right now, like, how do you see them out of the teams that are fighting for the top four? Do you feel because they don't have any European distraction, they have the best chance of getting it. Yeah, that definitely gives them a huge chance. And like you said, they keep getting more people and more solutions to find goals. Like with Gorizetta coming in now, they have quite a few players on three goals already this season. And Munyain hasn't even scored yet. So I feel like when Munyain really adjusts to this new system, that they will be much more dangerous. Yeah, they will be and by and on by the lead, they seem like they're pretty at the moment, they're pretty safe right now. They're they aren't in too much trouble. Yeah. They besides this game, they've had a pretty good last month with good results against Celta and Real Sociedad and El, beating Elche is obviously 
more important. <laughs> everyone <laughs> beats Elche right now. Everyone beats Elche, but um, have Sevilla yeah. played Elche yet? I don't think they have. Atleti are playing Elche next, so that'll be <laughs> that should be a layup. If if Atleti that, can beat Elche, then Sevilla then then they should they, they, they should pack it up. Yeah, <laughs> but, yeah. Right, I feel we've uh, have done enough so far to show me that they'll be fine. I I predicted they'd finish seventeenth, but I feel. Uh, depending on or there, there, there are some things below them that need to wake up and maybe that might make them drop but who knows yeah who knows Valencia are two points out of Real Valladolid they they were outstanding against Betis I really enjoyed the performance I really enjoyed the third goal as well yeah. and it seems like what's um, this, the pressure that was on Gattuso's Somewhat relieved. He, he was very buoyant in his post match press conference, being like, Yeah, we have young players, but we can also play too. Yeah, it was a very, like you said, it was a very good performance against Real Betis. Even with 11 men, Real Betis barely created anything. There was just one pretty good save Mama does really had to make. I thought I was really impressed with Almeida in this game with Samuelino. Samuelino was involved in a lot. Yeah, he almost scored a goal of the yeah. season with yeah. his dribbles. I said, I tweeted during the game that Samuel Lino is who Carrasco thinks he is. <laughs> yeah, uh, that, I just noted that actually Samuel Lino has been really good this season. The only issue I have with him is that he's a little too stingy sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> but I, I can't, but that, that's also a good trait to have. And yeah, like the young players of Valencia, obviously with a young team, there's going to be inconsistencies, but then you get games like this where they can really... And also, shout, shout out to Yunus Musa. He was oh, excellent too, I feel. Uh, he deserved a goal. When that one hit the bar, I was like, no. Yeah, yeah he deserved yeah. a goal. Just Hopefully, he does well at the World Cup. The thing to this is injury doesn't look like a serious thing. Yeah, like, hope, hopefully he does well at the World Cup and... I hope he doesn't do too well, so Valencia don't have to sell him. But yeah. He does well enough. And Valencia right now, they're four points off. Uh, I'm sorry, they're seven points away from third. Five points away from the Champions League. And I think about around three points away from the comp- – or four points away from the Conference League. So it's it's a pretty tight situation in La Liga. Because even Mallorca are there where they're like the same position as Valencia, same points. Mm-hmm. and it's hard to tell who's going to finish where it makes it somewhat exciting but yeah. i also know it's because of the fact that atletico's level has dropped tremendously sevilla have committed sports and suicide but it makes <laughs> it quite exciting though yeah i feel like though for a team like bet is given the progress they've made if they don't finish for in the top four it's kind of a letdown isn't it Oh, it definitely is. But the thing with Betis, though, is that they've had a serious discipline issue. When Se- that game, serious is crazy. Yeah. Serious is too kind. Yeah, <laughs> Seven too red cards in 14 games yeah. is insane. Yeah. And that, that's like, it's happened in games where, for example, against Celta, I felt they were the better team. They should have mm-hmm. won that one. Against Valladolid, who knows what would have happened if they kept 11 men on the pitch. Even in this game, right? Because it's 0 0 and Edgar's on a yellow card, and you're like, you don't have to put in that track. You don't have to put in that lazy leg. Uh-huh. And you know, if you're a Valencia player, you're excited for that because you're like, I'm going to get this guy sent off. Yeah. And the male playing team play with less men. And I feel that's a big reason why Betis, they haven't fully taken advantage of this opportunity they have. But I also feel with Betis, maybe the pressure is getting to them. Because they had an opportunity to really stamp their authority against Sevilla and against Valencia, yeah. but they have they failed to do that. Yeah, assuming things went according to plan, they got a reasonable prediction of six points. They let's add five to what they have now. They'd be twenty. They have twenty nine points now. They'd be comfortably clear of the likes of Athletic of Atleti. So you definitely have to call these last two games missed opportunities. Yeah, and the next team they're playing, I feel, after the World Cup break is Athletic. So that will be... Yeah, Athletic team. and... I think we're going to... Athletic, someone else, and then Barca. So it's not going to be easy. 
no, it's not going to be easy for them, but we shall see. But I, I'm I'm really excited, um, enjoying this race for the top three, top four, because I don't know who's going to do it. And yeah. the teams are so inconsistent. <laughs> <laughs> and anything can happen any week. You, know, you might not know in like two or three weeks, maybe Ryo will be there or Sasuna will be there. That would be a crazy. But yeah. like you said, it's not going to be too much of a surprise given how inconsistent everybody is. Yeah, speaking of inconsistent, Villarreal, they finally won under Kike Setien. They won by a bit of luck. Uh, there's, still, there's still rumors that Kike Setien might not be the right guy for Villarreal. He might still be, get sacked regardless. Bielsa might come in or uh, Hazard might come in. <sighs> like, I mean, who is the last person? Uh, Hazard He was also linked. Oh, okay. Job. Like... Mm. Do you see why there's, or do you know why there's such pessimism with Kike Setien? Uh, I feel like the whole team with the lots of possession and then not creating too many quality chances is, you know, like pretty, you know, I feel like that's winning a lot of people's minds too much. Now, granted, two of the games he has failed to win have been pointless games because they qualified already, but... And then there's also like his his ending to his Barcelona career that eats too and whatnot. So I feel I feel people are overreacting. Yeah, and it's, you, yeah, especially when you it's too soon to sack him. Yeah, mm-hmm. when you look at his La Liga losses and you see that it's against Atletico who are having a really good season. Mm-hmm. It's against Mallorca who are very decent this season, and I can make a bet that if that under United Emery they would have they could have lost that kind of game too because. Yeah. Emery is not really a consistent league manager. But let's see. I, I want to see what Kike Setien can do with a fully fit Villarreal squad before I say Kike out or not. You know, like yeah. give him the benefit of the doubt. Yeah, and a, and a forward we overlooked in the Spain discussion is Jared Moreno. Like it, it is sad that he's not going with Spain, but I guess for Kike Setien, it would be a blessing to be able to work with Gerard, to be able to work yeah. with the mm-hmm. full complement of Villarreal's teams. Granted, Jackson is going to, with Senegal, but yeah. to get his message across, to get his playing style across, like this mm-hmm. break is the reason why maybe they opted for a song like Kike Setien, who's so drastic from Unai Emery, because it's mm-hmm. a preseason in a way. Yeah, and then, like you said, a lot of, it's only three Villarreal players that are going as far as I know. So yeah, he has most of the goalkeeper. Oh, sorry. Really, to uh, yeah, and fight, fight, yeah. Right. So, yeah. and there's a lot of people that are going to be staying back, so you can really get your ideas across. You, I mean, if he has to play a game during this period, he has a front line of Gerard, Dan Juma, and Chukwese. That's not bad. So, uh, that's you know, actually... you st- <laughs> that, that's that's actually pretty good. Yeah. So yeah, but um, yeah, so that's something you can do. Like, okay, let's work on what we want to do and. Hopefully for him, everyone stays fit. Yeah. Espanyol is a team that's gone under the radar in how dangerously close they're flirting with that relegation zone position. Yeah. Not, the thing is that they've not really done much. They've not been bad enough for people to talk about like Elche, but then they've not been good either. And you can't, you just look at his team and wonder. Even with Hossel scoring a good amount of goals, they're not getting any higher up the table. Yeah. I, I don't just, know. I just feel they need that secondary goal scorer and Brentford hasn't done that. Mm-hmm. And also, maybe in the midfield, they need one more quality midfielder because Dada is doing a good job. Same with Vanessa Salsa. But they need that one more player who can really hold mm-hmm. that midfield together and can combine... Mm-hmm. And makes me question why they let go of Melendo, who was doing really well last season. Yeah, I feel yeah, I feel Melendo is on. I feel like yeah, so selling someone like Melendo and not replacing him properly, and it's also selling and Barber too gives you a huge drop in quality because the squad is already pretty threadbare, and like we've discussed many times, their transfer planning was a disaster. So. Hopefully for them in January, they get a couple of people in, in at least one person for each position because defensively, 
you know, Cabrera has let them down multiple times. <laughs> yeah, I think Cabrera, um, Cabrera, Almiron, uh, Cleric, and Sergio Gomez, they're in like some crazy run <laughs> where, they have, where they have won in La Liga. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, speaking of former Espanol players, um, Leo Batistao and, and Barbara, the aforementioned um, and Barbara, they've been really key to our Maria changing their form. Yeah, indeed, especially home games have been key for Maria. Away from home, they seem completely hopeless, <laughs> but at home, surprisingly for once, they didn't score three goals at home. <laughs> Just the one was necessary against the Tafi. Yeah, and it feels whenever they play with that settled 4 2 3 formation, they're much more solid team, but I wonder why they didn't do that away from home against Barca. Maybe they were just like focused on this game and yeah, the, the, the focus was definitely on this game and just damage limitation. If you get a chance on the break, take it. If not, you know, this that's not a that's not a game that'll decide our fate. It's games like this that'll decide where whether we'll be in the division next year or not. And thanks to that game, they are two points ahead of Atafi. Yeah. And I'll say the one thing with them is they had tremendous patience with Ruby because at the start of the season, things weren't really going well. But mm. I feel the president and sporting director recognized that they, like a lot of teams in Spain this season, they got, they, they, um, they got things done very late. Yeah. And the manager needed a lot more time to make the squad gel. And at the start, when they were losing to Asasuna at home, it wasn't looking like Ruby was going to stay in the job for very long, but they kept the patience with Ruby. And at home, at least, they looked like a very solid team that no one wants to play against. Yeah. And if they keep this up, I can definitely see them staying up. Because yes. yeah, yeah, in a post sadic world, it looked really bleak for a long time. And now the goals have come from everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> but one team that it's hard to see them staying up is Elche. Like like we discussed before, it seems like everyone can beat them at, at this moment. Yeah, Jorna are the latest people to beat Elche up. And for Jorna, this is great because it's their second win in a row after being on a, such a long win this run. Well, it's hope for Elche. If Jorna can do it, why can't we do it? <laughs> It does keep Carlos Clerk as far away from the pitch as possible. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm, so, I'm really surprised that they brought back Almiron because he had such a bad run. I think he had 14 games without a win the last time he was there. Mm-hmm. Why bring him back? Because he just sets an shape further back. Yeah, but you know, they've sacked him again. It was Sergio Mantecon that was in charge today. <laughs> Sorry, that day. And he's just an interim. Like nobody seems to really want this job. In the pod last time we mentioned Borderlands, but that I haven't really heard too much about that recently. So who knows if that's oh. true? Yeah, and the thing is, there there are managers who've gone to second division clubs who I feel were very good. Like Fran Escriba, they could have brought him back. They could have brought Paco Lopez in. Who I thought would have been a good yeah, but he's gone to Granada. Actually. He's gone to Granada. Kayek has gone to Levante. So there were there are many options that they had. It's just he went with Amiran, who was so bad the first time. So uninspiring. Why, why bring him back? Yeah, yeah. So you know, the final game is Rayo against Salta, and in this game, Salta did what some managers try to do in that if they're going through a bad run. Let's just get we'll back three. Three. Yeah, back three, <laughs> defend well, back to basics, and well, they, they, they got they got the result they wanted. Yeah. They had the best chances in the first half, but they just didn't take it. Surprisingly, Aspas didn't start. The commentator may have hinted maybe he's he's expecting a call-up, but I'm like, come on. Yeah, because I heard it, different things though about that. I heard the one about a call up. I heard maybe he had a fight with the president. So this was somewhat of a punishment because Aspas has been somewhat critical about the transfer dealings of Salta in this yes, past summer. Same with Danny Suarez with that whole scouting boy scene. Danny Suarez got more hits because it's like, uh, if I go after Aspas, the fans will kill me because this, <laughs> this guy is single handedly keeping us up every year. Yeah. And Salta, 
they themselves too, like Sevilla has been getting all the heat, but they're not too far from that relegation battle. Yeah, that's that, that point was what was needed to make sure Sevilla spent, spent Christmas in the relegation zone. But yeah, Celta, they're quite like Celta. And, well, uh, now I talked earlier about like some teams need to get their act together and maybe that might push Real Valde a little down the table. I was talking about Celta and Sevilla because it's really surprising to see both of them down there. Yeah, even Espanyol too, like they're there as well. So it seems that the title race is between two. We're going to have a crazy run for European positions. I don't know who's going to finish where, but I have a feeling that Betty might finish somewhere in, in the top four. And the relegation battle might get more exciting if the big teams or the teams that were considered big teams there start winning. Yeah. Yeah. So for this match day, who was your team of the team of the match day and your best player of the match day? Uh, team of the match day. I'll have to give it to Valencia. Who? Yeah, best player. Best player. This one is harder. Uh, let's say Marucci. Marucci, yeah. Yeah, I'll, I'll say, I'll agree with you for both of them. I feel like Marucci is, is God at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> the guy can do no wrong. He can do no wrong. Hirata. Yeah. Now, speaking of goalkeeping errors, I forgot to mention that Obdok should have done better for that goal. <laughs> okay, let's not be as if I'm just picking on Courtois. Yeah, Do yeah. I am? Let me be fair. <laughs> of that uh, should have done better, but uh, the thing is that the athletic defense should. Have done. Yeah, the, the thing is that Atleti's whole team is so bad right now that Oblak making an error is the least of their problems. Yeah, because even then, right? It's like there's no one picking Richie's run. There are about two players trying to stop. Um, Rayo, the Rayo had the option and space to even pass it back. Yeah. <laughs> Because normally you would have no space and you just try to go for goal from there. But he's like, oh, there's enough time I can pass. He, he had enough time to envision the third man road. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> like, like if, if there are two clear passes in your penalty box, there's a problem. Messed up. Yeah. yeah. Although the initial shot should have been handled better, but still the defense was just. I mean, when Felipe is starting, that's. I mean, you saw, like, I don't know if you saw, noticed how Marich was just picking Felipe all the time to <laughs> read headers off. Yeah. I mean, it's fun. I mean, it's not Felipe. It's like, Felipe is a big guy, but it's like, you know, it's much easier to handle than Savage. Yeah. And plus, if you stick to him a lot, he might lose his head. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. Let's move on to Serie A. Uh, mm-hmm. And I'm going to start with Napoli because they, further extended the points gap at the top to eight points out of Lazio. What more can we say in Napoli? There's no way they're going to bustle at this time. Uh, you know, like Dean Martin said, no, sorry, sorry that, that's the wrong song. Forgot what I was going to say. Anyway, <laughs> yeah, it's, I'm, it's Napoli. <laughs> let's keep that at the back of our mind, but let's also live in the moment and just enjoy what they're doing because what they're doing is excellent. So let's just hope the break the, the break doesn't do them too dirty. But I feel if there's one thing that's going to make Napoli do in Napoli, it's probably this World Cup break. Yeah, but I guess the good thing for them is Ozzyman. A lot of yeah, I was going to say Ozzyman isn't going to go. Yeah, and a lot of the Italian players aren't going to go. I'm not sure whether Zambo is going to go as well or Giovanni Simeone is going to go. Giovanni is... Oh, why did I think he was Italian for a minute? No, Giovanni Simeone isn't going Argentina. Yeah. I think they're the best player for Napoli who's possibly going to go is um, Zielinski. Yeah, yeah, Zielinski. Yeah, because the Georgian is possibly not going to go to the World Cup. So. Yeah, and then I don't... No, if Poland will even go that far because Poland that Poland so in international tournaments yeah. it sells us. So yeah, I don't know. And Poland are in a very tough group with Argentina and Mexico. So Zielinski will probably be back home, <laughs> back home in time for the league to resume. Yeah, yeah. 
last year I heard our criticism and they, they started winning. They they won one zero against Monza. And they're this, second now. They're second now. Juventus. They're not too far away from last hey, you give year. You have recovered. Yeah. It's, Although, did you see that handball? No, no. Tell me, tell, tell us more about it. I saw this handball and I was like, there is no way. That's what I was, I was like, there is no bloody way, Alexandre. This penalty was given and then cancelled. It is, <laughs> it is like, I'm like, oh, it's UV. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> it's the history. <laughs> It's the history of you. <laughs> Catch up, fully. Catch up, fully. And Milan, they, Milan they, they can't seem to find their way in the league this season compared to last season, but at least in the Champions League, they're, they've gone further than last season. Um, yeah, and we have to talk about a certain man in Roma that can't keep his mouth shut. <laughs> oh, Mourinho. Honestly, this is why whenever people are like, Mourinho has changed this my <laughs> word he has changed. I was like, changed. I just look at the happy like, one. The happy like, one, my foot. <laughs> this is why I he's one of the people in football that I hate. I think a lot to make me hate on, but like I hate him because every team he goes to, he always finds a player. Cursed up. <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, I was going to talk about Roman at first because I was. I and I saw this start out Tamir Bram only having two goals and missing 10 big chances. But he <laughs> he, sc- he scored this week. It wasn't yeah. enough to beat Sassuolo, but then the whole car stop and Mourinho team is just too juicy not to talk about. <laughs> like like why do you th- why do you think he's like this? And what impact do you think this can have on the rest of the players? Because that was his downfall around Madrid when he picked up. Yes, that's yeah. that's his downfall everywhere. The dressing he turns the dressing room against it. What's it now? This like set second season syndrome. So it usually happens in the third season. He started <laughs> in the second season. Yeah, and especially at a place like Roma where you didn't you won't expect it's like it's not like the players are like the star kind of players that have egos like Paul Pogba or something. The biggest player at Roma is the baller and he's pretty mellow like. He doesn't look for trouble, you know. But you know, when, when you're Mourinho, trouble and you are like this. <laughs> I can imagine you're putting your hands together. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, that's literally what I just did. Oh, but those who are familiar with that meme, just search yeah. Nigerian man putting two hands together, <laughs> two fingers together. <laughs> Oh man, that, that's that's hilarious. But hopefully, for Roma's sake, this doesn't affect their season too much. Like I think Serie A is like similar to what we have in La Liga. There's going to be a big fight for that top four, top. Seven. Yeah, I can look at the league table right now. I can see this. You have Udinese there on twenty four points, and then four points behind Juve, who are fourth. Yeah. Yeah. And and if yeah. Napoli starts to make. A mistake and they start shuffling up top, it's and then the top like four, the title race becomes juicy. Yeah, but it's like eight teams could win it. Yeah, but one team that doesn't look like they're going to win this title race anymore at Atlanta, they've oh, lost man. again. Yeah, uh, I don't, I don't get like their downfall because they used to be this team that used to really smash teams five, yeah, zero, seven zero, and it, now seven, it's... yeah, seven zero three times in one season, but now. They don't even score that much anymore. And you know, the magic of Ilicic or Papu Gomez, that's all gone away. Yeah. Darren is it even cracking jokes anymore. No, his Instagram though is quite lit though. Yeah, I know, but he's not cracking as many as he used to. <laughs> True. Maybe Gasparini had a word with him. Like, you know, now is not the time, so. Yeah. Yeah, let's let's transition to the Bundesliga. Uh, Dortmund they were in action today. They lost 4-2. Dortmund, we were getting excited about them because of how Bayern was. Who is we? I, I, was, getting, I, was, getting excited. I was getting excited about them. but Look, <laughs> Now Bayern, uh, they, they're dominant in Bundesliga again. Yeah. Like, with Napoli and Dortmund, they've hurt me too many times for me to say I'm going to fully believe they will do this. I'll just hope. <laughs> 
<laughs> and with Napoli, I'm genuinely hoping, boy, don't, don't hope anymore because it's like you guys lost against like you guys were trashed against like, was it Wolfsburg? Yeah, Wolfsburg away to two abject away performances in a row. And then people are questioning Terzic. Now it's like, okay, we all employed this guy because we liked him and everything, <laughs> but <laughs> you know. Are we going to end up hitting his guts? Yes. Yeah. The thing though is like if maybe they might not fight for the Bundesliga title this season, but if they finish in the top four, they do well against Chelsea and they do well in the Pokal. I'm not sure if they're still in there. I think he would have gotten an A for his performance at Dortmund, no? Yeah, but given performances like this, can you really see them doing anything against Chelsea? No, but also... Chelsea. But then Chelsea have... I mean, Brighton is beating them 3-1, so... Yeah. Oh, there's no world there. No, it's not. And on Bayern, Sadio Mane, the rumours that he might miss the World Cup, but Alucice somewhat surprised us by putting him in that yeah. List World Cup. Yeah, but uh, it doesn't seem he's going to be ready for the first game. Well, I guess that's fine, too. As long as... He can play the other two games. Yeah. Yeah. And with that, we're going to close it for this edition of the podcast. Uh, stay tuned. We're going to have a special World Cup edition of the podcast. Yes, La Cancha is not taking a break during the World Cup. We're going to try to analyze games as they go in the World Cup. And thank you for listening. Oscar, thanks for doing this with me. No problem. Guys. <laughs>